times. I'm surprised. I went in for my debonding, as they say, to get the braces off. I'm definitely lisping. Uh, this will take some getting used to. As promised, I wanted to bring to you a video about what to expect when getting debonded or getting your braces taken off. As I explained in my other video, this is just the first really long step in my orthodontic journey. Um, the braces are gone, but I still have an implant. So now that site has opened up large enough so that the implant can be placed there. So let's talk really quick about my uh, debonding experience. So this will take longer than a normal tightening appointment. Those are usually in and out about 40 minutes. This one for sure took a solid two hours once I was in the chair. I believe my appointment took just a tad longer because the first time they tried to um, affix the bonded retainer, it wouldn't take and it kept snapping off. So they had to do that a few times. Also, I am super glad that I had breakfast before I went. I wondered if I should just hold off because they were gonna be working in there so much I didn't wanna risk having any food particles stuck to my teeth. Uh, definitely would recommend you eat something before this appointment between waiting and then being brought in in a few hours and you're anxious and you're a little nervous and you're excited. So, you know, fill your belly before you go. To be honest, this was probably the most painful out of all the year long appointments I've been going for. The way that they debond you is they take this, it looks like pliers. So they take this tool that looks like pliers um, and it has little grippers. So instead of the pliers being to snip, um, the pliers would be to grab and they grab the four corners of a bracket on your tooth. So they put the tool in and they crack and applying pressure to the corners will cause it to kind of bend just so that plastic, the glue, the ceramic bracket or the metal bracket, it flexes just enough to pop off the tooth. So I was pretty worried about um, the damage that could be done to your tooth when they do stuff like that. So at my second to last appointment, I specifically asked about fracturing teeth and they said no one in this office has ever fractured a patient's tooth. But then she said, um, but my tooth was fractured, meaning her. So she, the orthodontic assistant was telling me that her tooth was fractured when her braces came off when she was an adult, uh, but not at this practice. So that was both reassuring and scary at the same time because obviously it can happen, um, but they were trying to reassure me that it's never happened there. Great news is I'm all done. Nothing happened with mine, but I was on the edge of my seat holding on really tight each time. Um, it is painful. So uh, there were certain ones, especially the ones like in the back. Um, the ones in the back were fine. Like they just grip and pop, grip and pop. Um, the ones on the smaller teeth, especially in this region and this region and the front teeth, oh, those really, uh, I was sweating the entire time. Like I had to be like, okay, okay, wait, okay, go. You know, <laughs> when she was cracking these ones, these ones, and like all of these, that was pretty painful for me. Cracking them off the teeth probably took five minutes on the bottom, maybe seven to nine minutes on the top. I'm trying not to underestimate how much time it took. I think it was something like that. The polishing of the teeth took a lot longer. So um, after it's all cracked off, you still have glue particles all over your teeth and they have to use um, one of those drill bits um, to sand, pretty much sanding each of your tooth to get all the glue off. I had a lot left behind. Um, I even had bits of the ceramic brackets that like wouldn't come off when the chunk of it came off. So we were drilling for a really long time. It was uncomfortable. She knew it was uncomfortable for me. She did the best she could. I asked like if we could take a break because it took almost 15 minutes, maybe a tiny bit more on one tooth because the glue and the bracket and she just like couldn't get it off. She had to switch the drill burr, the drill bit, whatever. I think it's a burr. Um, like three times throughout the whole process. So I did not love that at all. That was the most uncomfortable thing. At least with the cracking, it's like over pretty quick, but it took like an hour maybe to um, polish all my teeth. But even before they did any of that, they put the bonded retainer on first. So that's the wire that goes behind your teeth.
So that wire was placed on before they cracked the brackets off. Um, that also didn't take the first time. When they uh, place that, they dry out your mouth. You know, they put the separators in, they put the gauze in, they use the air, they use a polishing like a conditioner on your teeth, they dry that. Then they put the glue, they make sure it's tacky, and then they stick that wire on using like a mold of the back of your teeth so it goes into the exact place it needs to go. And then they kind of hold it there and the glue needs to set. And it probably took five minutes for the glue to set. It wasn't uncomfortable, it didn't hurt, you know, other than keeping your mouth open the whole time, your tongue can't touch it, little things like that. The pick that they use to scrape tartar off your teeth, like they'll use that to kind of hook behind it and tug a little bit up and down to make sure it's not gonna move. And mine snapped off like immediately. So she did it a different way the second time, which was longer and she needed that um, light that cures the glue. So she had to do that. She had to put glue along the whole back of my teeth rather than just the back of the two eye teeth. And then the funny part was she had to take floss and make like loops out of the floss and put them between my teeth so she could put the wire against the back of my teeth and use the floss to kind of like pull forward. So like if this is the wire, she put the floss around here and around here and behind my teeth like pulled it forward and held it there. So she was just like holding two strings until it cured. <laughs> so that was kind of funny. Uh, but again, it didn't hurt. It wasn't really uncomfortable and that part lasted like another 15 minutes or something, the whole process again. So then I went on to retainers. I have one in right now, I'll show you that one. And then I have the bonded one on the bottom. And then I got a third one, cause I'm special like that. This third one is for the bottom. And the only reason I need this is to keep the space open for the implant. So I only have to wear both of them at the same time. <laughs> it's so hard to talk with them. I only have to wear the bottom one when I'm sleeping at night. The bonded retainer will do most of the work for the next, what is it, six weeks until, maybe less than that, four weeks, until I have, yeah, three weeks, what? Um, until I have the implant. The implant is happening in a few weeks. So I only need this on at night for a few weeks. To store your retainers, they give you these retainer holders. They gave me three of them. Um, I got to choose them, pick some random colors. So I have one in my car, um, one on my work desk, and one next to my bed. They are ridiculously easy to snap in and out. They recommend that you um, use your fingers and you, you go to the back of your teeth to pull them off, not the front. And I asked, you know, do I need to pull them down evenly at the same time and, or can I just pull it down on one side? Because one of my sides is longer, I'll show you that. And she said just one is fine. Pretty simple. Um, usually they are covered in saliva. I washed it and popped it in and out so that you didn't have to see that. You will notice now that it's out, there's a slowly forming gap in between my two front teeth. That started to happen in the last couple of weeks being in my finishing braces. But even if it doesn't, they have another way that they can create like a dimple on here to make it even tighter. So there's a few tricks that they can still apply even after the braces are off to make sure that that closes up. Also take a look at my retainer. It's not even, which is funny. I'll hold the two front teeth. So this side is clearly much longer and that is because this side um, encompasses this molar and this one doesn't. And I asked about it and they said that that's just how it is. So if anybody knows why that is, I'm just more curious than anything. So as I was leaving, they have a tradition at my particular orthodontic practice that you get to bring a gong and then everybody, you know, all the orthodontic assistants and doctors who are all over the office clap. So it's kind of like when you hear somebody singing happy birthday at a restaurant, everybody claps along or turns and sings with that. It's kind of like that. So everybody can share in the joy of finally getting your braces off. And they said very hesitantly, do you want to ring the gong? Thinking because I was older and an adult and over 30 years old, I might not want to. And I was like, hell yes, I want to ring the gong. 
Because throughout my time at the office, once in a while I would hear someone ring the gong and I didn't really know what it meant. I just know someone would ring it and usually whoever was working on me would just be like, yay. Well, because her hands were busy so she couldn't clap. So she'd just turn around and say, yay. Um, I say she because in the whole time there I never had a male orthodontic assistant. Also on my way out, I was given this little mysterious baggie. You know you have a good orthodontist when they give you all the candy you couldn't have over the past year. There was actually more in here and I didn't eat it. Um, there are just things I didn't like so I passed them off to somebody else. There was also microwave popcorn in here and I don't own a microwave so I have a whirly pop so I will be making my own popcorn very soon. They gave me a bunch of different floss and this floss is gonna help me keep that bonded retainer really clean. They also recommended that I go ahead and get kind of like Alka-Seltzer type tablets that will clean these, not all the time, just as needed, kind of the way that someone would clean dentures, put it with a fizzy tablet in water and let it sit for a little while. For more daily maintenance of these guys, they just say cold water um, and toothpaste and a toothbrush. Now this was probably the coolest thing they gave me. On my way out, they said if they crack, if they just break completely, call us back and come in with these. They actually handed me 3D models of my own teeth. And this is so if it breaks, you bring this in and they can cast the new retainer using the mold rather than having new scans done of your teeth because your teeth aren't really supposed to change all that much. So it saves you, I think they said like it saves you 40 bucks or something. Um, but more than that, it saves them the time it would take to have the scans done, process the scans and have a retainer made out of them and your teeth could shift in that time. So she just said kind of, Hang on to these guys, put them in a safe place, and in the future, should you need new retainers, there you go. So in preparation for my braces coming off, before I knew I was getting all this candy, I went to the store and I bought myself two things to celebrate. One, a candy that I wasn't supposed to have and also my friends always told me I couldn't have because my TMJ would click really loud and distract them from enjoying the movie. Delicious. Now I'm gonna have some. And the second one was a fabulous, expensive, super duper deluxe toothbrush because my existing toothbrushes were looking like crap from, you know, brushing around the braces so much, they were falling apart. I mean, I'd only use them for X amount of time, but I wanted to treat myself today, no braces, brand new toothbrush. So I settled on these bad boys. They look like fun ones and has some sort of stain eraser. I don't know. I think it's just like a piece of plastic in the middle that's supposed to like act as a polisher while you're brushing. I don't really believe in that stuff, but the marketing got me. Also my favorite colors. Thank you for watching my video. Please like and subscribe. If I just had these like out on display in the guest bathroom, would that be weird? If you came over and you were washing your hands and these were just like next to the soap and it wasn't Halloween, wouldn't that be weird?